Okay, I think we're live. Hey folks, good morning. It's lovely to see everyone. Hi, Janet and Melissa and Linda. Welcome to Thursday morning um, to a regular YouTube live. My name is Ali Manning. The channel is Vintage Page Designs and here we do all things handmade books. Um, today, I'm going to be working inside uh, one of my handmade books, uh, a journal. Um, I'm going to be doing a little collage. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to say a little shout out to um, the two folks who are helping me behind the scenes. Um, Amber and Mickey are sort of behind the camera. You can't see them. They're not actually in the room with me. Um, but they are answering your questions in the chat. So big thank you to um to Amber and Mickey, and I want to say a shout out to uh, Kathy, Amber's mom, who might be watching. Well, she might, so hopefully. So, hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. Okay, I am no expert on collage, my friends, but I love to do it. I've been doing it for years. I've been filling my journals um, with collage for years, and so I just wanted to share with you some of my thoughts and maybe give you um, permission to to play, to experiment, and to not get sort of too bogged down with. All the rules. So the first question that I get asked all the time, so I may as well just answer this question because I know it's going to come up in the chat. So let's just address that question right now. You're going to ask me how I organize my collage materials. I have a lot of collage materials because um, I don't throw anything away. I collect things everywhere I go. Um, just every single day I'll be picking up little things from the ground, from restaurants, from uh, the mailbox, from the trash, like everywhere, I'm always collecting little bits of collage. So the biggest question that I always get asked is how do you organize your collage materials? And I organize mine by color. I have the big Ikea um, drawers, Alex drawers, I wanna say they're called. Um, and then the collage materials are organized. Um, some drawers have one color in them, like black, white, and brown have their own drawer. And then some drawers are divided in two and I have, you know, yellow and purple because I don't have a lot of that. I also organize my materials by um, type as well. So I have a whole drawer full of uh, words, I have a whole drawer full of napkins, I have a whole drawer full of pa my paste papers. So it's by color and sort of also by type. I have quite a lot of um, small boxes with, say, tags in them or envelopes in them or um, postage stamps. So I organize by type and color. Is that the right way? No, it's just how I do it and how I like to have it organized. And it just helps me um, make sense of things. And I'll talk a little bit more about how I approach collage. Um, and that, that will kind of make sense of how I organize my things in a minute. So I just wanted to cover that because I know that that is a big question. That's just always on people's minds. How do you organize your collage materials? Um, just, and my advice to you would be just organize them how it makes sense to you. If you just need a big rubber made bin and chuck everything in and that's how you organize it, great. Just do whatever works best for you. Personally, I get overwhelmed if I just have bins and bins full of stuff. So um, that's how I organize it. And the other question I get asked a lot. Hi everyone. Oh, are people having a hard time hearing me? Um, let's just turn, I just noticed that someone said, could I speak closer to the microphone? Microphone's right here. Um, let's see. You, okay, thank you. Mickey just told me about the microphone. Thank you very much. Um, and the other question I get asked all the time before I flip my camera down and we start looking at some books, because I have a few here, is um, where do I find things for collage? And I think I just alluded to some of those um, things just now. I find, and so I will show you when I go through my books, I will sort of point out different things, but I literally find them everywhere. I mean, the obvious places like junk mail and magazines, um, but less obvious place, I was in the dollar store yesterday and I found some really cool um, like cork uh, coasters. They're like these thin cork coasters and it was like really, and it, they were just I don't know, just had to have them for collage. So I just find them in dollar stores. I find them like on the ground. I find rusty little things on the ground, I find feathers on the ground. People mail me things a lot. You'll see I have a package that someone mailed me. Um, I do buy collage packs sometimes. A friend of mine had a, some collage, Cat Kirby had some collage packs out for sale. I bought one of those. Um, all the little bits and pieces from making books, like everything, everything is um, 
fair game, in my opinion. Clothing, I, I deconstruct a lot of clothing for collage too. So you're gonna see that in my journals. So um, I would love to know from you, let me know in the comments, um, some of the places, your favorite places to find items for um, collage. And, and remember, it doesn't have to be paper, it can be fabric, it can be natural items. Um, outside is a really great place to find items for collage, especially in the fall. Right now, you know, leaves everywhere, little bits of bark. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I would love to know. Um, I would love to know. Um, I'm just looking, sorry, I'm just reading your comments. <laughs> You, you know, one of the reasons my microphone might be a little bit in and out is that I'm on a yoga ball right now and I'm bouncing a little bit like this. So it might be that my uh, microphone is bouncing too. I'll try to not bounce. Okay, let me know in the comments where you like to find your um, collage materials. And I'm going to um, flip my camera down and we're going to take a look at some of my um, journals that I filled with collage. I'm going to give you some ideas of different things that I have used in the past. Um, before I do that, though, I just I just want to mention one more thing. Sorry, just before we change the camera around. I just want to mention one more thing, which I mentioned in my email. Um, and if you are not on our email list, by the way, we would love to have you on our email list. Um, let me just pop that on there. Um, that's a link to join our email list. I mentioned in my email today, uh, yesterday, actually, that um, when I collage, I like to give myself limits. So I do have a lot of stuff. And although it's organized, quite well. Um, I still feel like I need to limit things down because I get overwhelmed with everything that I have. You know, I gave the analogy of, um, you know, the restaurant with the huge, huge menu. I don't like restaurants like that. I just like a small menu of really nice things to choose from. So um, I really like to give myself limits and that might be color, it might be shape, it might be space. So I will talk to you about that as I go through a couple of my journals. And I'm just going to sort of talk out loud, talk through my process, as it were. What, what's going through my head? Which, won't that be interesting? Okay, let's um, give me one moment to flip the camera down. There we go. Okay, let's take a peek at what we have here. You, this, there's stuff everywhere here today, by the way. All right, let's get rid of my scarf because it's going to go inside the uh, gonna dangle on the desk. So when I say limits, sometimes I decide to limit myself on a color palette. So I had made this very colorful book, as you can see, and it... Um, it was pretty, it's a riot of color, as you can see. We should do one of these one day on Facebook Live. Um, I mean, a YouTube Live. Um, so I decided to keep the color palette inside the book to black and white, just so that um, it didn't compete with the with the cover. So it's, it's a fairly chunky little journal. You can see that it's a fairly chunky journal, but the majority of it is black and white. And the, my jumping off point was um, this book. It's, um, it's one of these books that I got at, you know, the bookstore for like a dollar. Um, and it's filled with old advertising. And I was just reading through it and I just find the page that really jumped out at me. So these alphabets in here, which were very cool. These, um, these sort of large black and white alphabets. Hold on. I knew I wouldn't be able to find the right page. Where did it go? Well, anyhow, you can see there's, they have all these sort of big, bold, black and white um, alphabets. I mean, look at those end pages. Come on, people. How cute is that? So this was sort of the jumping off point for me. I'm like, I love that. And you're going to see this paper inside the book, too. Um, whether it was meant for collage or not, I don't know, but I decided for a dollar I was going to rip it all up. I mean, it also had these really interesting um, women in here too. Good Lord. Okay, let's let me just see. For some reason, my phone just rang. Uh, we lost, I think we lost Mickey. Okay. Sorry, Mickey. Don't know why we lost Mickey, but um, unfortunately, I can't take a phone call right now. OK, 
Good grief. Okay, sorry, folks. Let me just double check that everything is okay with the broadcast, is it? Okay, Amber's still here, excellent. <laughs> Perhaps Mickey could go on um, straight onto uh, YouTube. That would be good if she's having trouble um, dropping in links and things. So that was my jumping off point. So let me show you some of the items that I included in this book. So here's the lady I was talking about, and here is that alphabet. And I decided to start with this black and white theme. So here are some, I used a black and white washi tape. I used some wrapping paper right here. I used magazine images, I used more washi tape. But what you're gonna notice is repetition of the same papers throughout. I used some vellum here. This was, I don't even know what this was left over from. This is an old, um, one of those old slides that you, um, do you remember the slides you used to have when you used to have projectors? That's an old slide right there. This is a paper bag from, hold on, let me just see where the other end of the paper bag is. It's in here somewhere. Here, here's the other end of the paper bag. This is a paper bag that I thought was very cool. It was in my black and white drawer. So I'm like, that would look great in here. Here's that paper I showed you earlier and you're gonna see it throughout the book. You're gonna see the repetition of this, um, this type of image throughout the book. You're also gonna see this, the repetition. What I noticed is that I started using um, things with circles. I won't show you that bit to the end. Started using this washi tape. So I had a stamp by Tisha Moore. So I started adding in the same rubber stamp throughout. So here's, the, um, here's that pattern paper we saw. Here's another alphabet. So what you're seeing is the limits are black and white. Um, but I'm repeating a lot of um, the same elements. There's the same washi tape. Here's a rubber stamp from the same collection. So it looks similar. Here's another one of those women. Um, this right here is a jelly print that I'd done. It, I mean, it didn't come out very well, so I didn't include it in the original book. But when I was looking through my black and white drawer, this was in there and I thought, oh, that goes really well with this. So I was by limiting myself to that black and white drawer, I sort of reduced my number of options, and to me, it it felt a lot it felt a lot easier. However, I did start to introduce a little bit of red, and the reason I introduced the red was I found this clown just so happened to be in my black and white drawer, I think, because this black and white at the back, and I just had to include this clown. So then I started finding a few elements with red in it. So this is a magazine image. This is a piece of scrapbook paper. So I could go on and on. I repeated the jelly print um, shape. I've repeated the red. I've repeated that pattern paper. Uh, this is repeated as well, this sort of textured paper. Here's another paper bag. The same paper bag will be repeated on the other side of the signature. Right here, there's the jelly print again. So you can see, here's some more red. Here's the rubber stamp, here's repetition of the circles, here's repetition of circles again, dots slash circles. So you can see that by sort of, if I decided oh, I'm gonna include green and I'm also gonna include diamonds and I'm also gonna include, I, I don't know, uh, not just alphabets, but I'm also gonna include, I don't know, some other sort of image, I don't know what it would be, leaves. I'm also gonna include leaves. It would just become jumbled and there'd be a lack of cohesion. So um, this is just a good example of, here's more circles, half circles. Here's that paper again. It's just an example of how I approach collage by add, you know, introducing some limits, but being flexible, because look, I had a little bit of orange here. Um, by being flexible, um, but starting out with some kind of limits around it. This is from a magazine that I cut out. It was just of this hand and then I added a quote. This is a rubber stamped image that happened to be in my black and white drawer. This right here is a doily. I mean, you have all this stuff. Love me some pockets. Here's another alphabet. So hopefully that gives you um, an idea. And then another journal that um, came, that I decided to give myself limits on 
was um, this book here. This is actually an altered kids book. One of these, um, I forget what these are called. There's a name for these type of books. I can't remember. I'm sure someone will know. Um, it was uh, an altered kids book. It's about um, seven inches by seven inches. And the limits I chose to do for this were by color. So I just wanted to do um, sort of whites and greens. And I decided to do everything in stripes. So I did it also by shape. So all I did throughout the whole book was strips of paper. But it could have been a little bit boring if I just layered up strips of paper. So um, the way I made it, I think, kind of pleasing to me was to include lots of different textures in this um, book. So on this page here, for example, we have drywall tape. We have hand sewing, so some embroidery floss. We have a little velvet leaf. Don't ask me where that came from. But it's in my stash. It was in my green drawer. So that's different texture. We have some cheesecloth here, which gives another texture. Um, and personally, this is one of the reasons I like to make books is so that they can be touched and held. If this was stuck on a wall, um, people would not be encouraged to touch it. So this really is one of the reasons I love to have books so that we can all touch them. Um, so there's all different textures on that. There's also some machine sewing here. So if I run my hand over this page, there's tons of different textures. Here is, um, this is painted paper, so it has a different texture to this smooth vintage paper right here. This drywall tape has a different texture to the velvet. So then, um, so those were the limits that I gave myself. And yes, I did add some brown, I did add a little bit of yellow, but you know, my basic, my initial limits were just neutrals and greens, and the theme was loosely kind of natural elements. This right here is a, um, what's the word, a uh, image transfer on packing tape. So um, this is shiny, it's also transparent, so that's another texture. This here is silk. And this all just came from my, you know, my, my whites drawer and my greens, and then I just added in a few other things. Here's another image transfer. So that is, again, is a different texture. And the way I started out each of these pages was by just doing a basic layer like this of strips of paper. We've got wallpaper here, vintage paper. This is fabric that's been rubber stamped on, um, ledger paper, and these are just old vintage you know, book pages. So each page started out like that, and then I just added on layer after layer. But my limits were the strips and then Obviously, I went against that occasionally to make something stand out by adding a um, tag or a horizontal pocket or a horizontal um, quote like that. But that was kind of intentional. Little ginkgo leaf. So that's another example of limits. Let me show you um, just a couple more. And then I'm going to show you the type of collage that I also really like to make, which is one, again, with limits, but with white space. So. In this book right here, I decided to do a page just with one inch squares. I mean, this is just in an altered book that is a practice book. You can see it's just all messy. Um, this isn't a finished journal. I mean, uh, to be honest, this is a finished journal. And the first one you saw is a finished journal. This, not so much. Look, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's just a practice book. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to make a whole page with one inch squares? And I did in a purple. Um, these purples and blues. And I got myself a punch, like a one inch punch. And then I found interesting papers and then arranged them in a way that was pleasing to me. Um, I added a layer of um, encaustic medium over the top and then um, put this very random found poetry, which hopefully you can't even read because it's kind of silly. Um, this page here I did with stripes. I don't love so much. I find this really pleasing, I have to say. Um, and then I did it again here, just some um, squares again and that was in these were in um sort of neutrals and then i used some photographs from a trip that i had and then i i mean do i love this page not, not particularly i mean it's fine it's interesting it was a good experiment i did this big heart over the top um with a stencil i, I don't i don't really love that but it's just a practice book where i did some limits i actually really like this page right here if we got rid of that heart, that would be kind of good. So this again had the um, one inch squares and it got some encaustic medium over the top. 
So that's just an example of um, limiting myself to shape and color um, and vaguely a theme, although it wasn't really a theme. So um, is there another, oh, and here's another page. Um, so now we're getting on to um, what I also really like. I mean, I do love these sort of very busy, intricate journals, but these take a long time. This will take, this would take several weeks. Um, I really like collage with white space. So um, here's an example of a really simple collage that I did in this same book that I'm just working on. Um, and I was experimenting with, you know, using the words on the page. Let me see if I can come in a little bit. Should just come in like that. So you can come in, I was experimenting with, um, again, it was just some play. What would happen if I did that? And then I outlined it in with a little crayon and then I just looked in my yellow drawer and found some interesting pieces in yellow. So this is from a magazine, this vintage paper. This is also from a magazine, probably a National Geographic. This is a leaf from a magazine, just a piece of fabric. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a masterpiece, but it's simple, it's got some limits. I decided to keep a ton of white space as well. So I think there are all the examples I want to show you right now. Um, and I want to get started. Well, actually, I don't want to show a couple more examples. <laughs> now I come to think of it. Um, what I want to talk about now is white space. Let's just pop those on the floor. Oh, Mickey's back. Yay. Hi, Mickey. <laughs> Poor old Mickey. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about white space. Where is, because I really like, if, um, if you are, if you're like me and a little strap for time, I quite like to do quick collages. And so I like to do um, collages with a lot of white space in them. So um, here are just a couple examples. This is a journal that was a large sheet of paper that had some just messy drips and scribbles on it that I tore up into to make a smaller journal. And then I riffed off these colors. So this is coffee and this is um, like a blue dye, I think. This is a Cardi paper. I just riffed off those colors and just picked a couple pieces of paper that spoke to me. But there are limits here. There's very few. I kept it in a very small little space intentionally. Sorry about the sirens outside. Um, but I intentionally chose this. This wasn't random. I tried to um, you know, be inspired by the blue. I was going to go with the beige, but I found this really nice um, silk um, seam, well, seam binding, not silk, but it's seam binding that I liked. Um, a little bit of washi tape here and a nice contrast with the wide black stripe and then the small um, little cross hatching from the security envelope. So, and then here's another example here. I don't love this one so much. Again, I prefer this one because it there's more white space, but this was just a brown paper bag that happened to be on my desk that I cut out. I had a little strip of um, Asian writing and then a little blue tag. So I personally, if I had to choose, I prefer this page right here because it has a ton of white space. And talking of white space, there's one more journal I want to show you before we get going on today's. Actually, there's two more. Um, this one here you may have seen. These are so much quicker to, to make than the big complicated ones. This here is just a little double pamphlet stitch book. If you've done the washi tape journal, you will know how to make this. Um, and it's just a quote by Mary Oliver. Let me pop the quote on the, um, I know, because I knew you were going to ask me. Let me pop the quote on the screen for you. This is the quote that is inside this book. Um, and look how simple this is. There's just, I limited myself to this green paper and some text and this little shorthand paper, maybe um, some other little vintage papers, and then a um, image transfer. I'll, re I'll read the quote in a minute, but they're just little strips down the side, and you'll just see the repetition. You can see this, this little patterned paper here, which was from a book I made for the book club. This is an old, um, wallpaper, but it's, it's repeated. That's repeated. Repetition is the key. My friends is that green paper. There's the blue one again. 
So the quote is, let me read it to you. It says, the most regretful people on earth are those who felt the call to creative work, who felt their own creative power, restive and uprising, and gave it neither power nor time. It's pretty powerful stuff. And then that's just the last page. So I do really like, um, again, real limits here, just little strips along the side, a handful of the same papers and image transfers and one quote. So let's tie up that puppy. So today's book that I'm gonna create with you, I'm gonna create some collages. Okay, there's one more. <laughs> here's one more, sorry. I keep, I keep showing you one more, one more, one more. Here's another one. Um, it's just on a loose piece of paper. I need to put it in a journal. But again, I just went to my black and white drawer and I just said, I've got to do a collage with a load of white space and I can only use a handful of papers. And I've used one, two, three, four papers here, piece of fabric, and then some words. And actually, I'm going to talk about my words in a minute. Um, and so that was, those were my limits. It had to fit on this piece of paper, had to have a ton of white space. I could just use these few little pieces of paper and see what I came up with. And this was already stitched from another project. Actually, you know what it was stitched from? It was from the, um, the fabric journal that you saw earlier, which I can't lay my hands on right now. Seems to have run away. But the, um, this was left from this project right here. Because, you know, God, God forbid we throw anything away, people. So anyhow. So we're going to create a little journal like this today with a ton of white space. I'm going to see if there's any questions before I start. Uh, how many journal, Candice has asked, how many journals do you work on at once? Um, I, hmm. <laughs> that's a good question. I'd love to know what other people would uh, say to that. That's the question that Candice asked. I have a bunch of altered books that I um, use to practice on, but then I generally do these smaller books. I generally finish them in one go. So like both. So I've probably got three or four sort of ongoing practice ones, different sizes. I've got a Zentangle journal I'll work on every day. But these little books I'm going to show you today, I generally finish in one sitting. So maybe half a dozen would be the answer. I have about probably half a dozen on the go at once. Um, we're going to create a book like this today. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's, um, it's to feature a poem. This book right here that I'm going to show you, uh, it, it features this. Um, you can look this up online. Um, it's A Blessing by John O'Donoghue. Surprise, surprise. And it is made from handmade paper. It is a pamphlet stitch book. Super simple. I'm coming a little bit closer so you can see. Ooh, that might be too close, actually. <laughs> um, I'll pan out in a second. And then has folded covers like this inside is the, oh, inside is the full um, poem and then on each page is are these mini collages and that's what I'm going to show you how I do today and then um, I did one verse so I picked I can't remember which uh, I forget which a uh, verse I picked but I picked one verse and included words from that verse so let me just take that off the screen. And so the limits here were, I had just a small pile of papers, which is what we're gonna do today. And I created these, what are called cross collages. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how you do those. And you'll just see the same papers are used throughout and the same um, composition is used on each page. So I don't love that, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna flip through so you can see. Oops, sorry, it's a bit hard to see. Let me let me pan out. Let me come out. It's easy. If, let me just flip back. You can, it's easy for you to see like that. But do you see with the choice of paper? I've got paper with texture. I've got this shiny paper. I've got a paper with a big print on it. I've got paper with sort of 
a very subtle print in it with things embedded in it. Um, I tried to choose like a mixture of different papers. This has got a very big print on it. You can't even really see what it is. And then um, this here has a, a some kind of texture that you can feel under your fingers. This is a smaller print. And then I had um, lots of leftovers. So I just took the strips of all the different papers and included them on the front and back page. So I'm gonna create one just like this today. Let me just check to see uh, if there are questions because it looks like there are. So I've answered, um, so Anne's question is, let me just um, flip, flip over, she says, come over <laughs> to the screen. I'm gonna answer your questions and then we'll get started on the book. It's already half an hour in and I've just been chit-tatting. Let me move over so I can see it. Which journals would you suggest to make for journals, for this type of journaling? <laughs> um, I'm not sure which journal you were talking about. So I've showed you um, a couple altered journals today. So I use kids books and I also use vintage books and I take pages out to make them thinner. Um, for these, for this book right here, which is the, this one right here. Honestly, most of them are pamphlet stitch books. If I know I'm gonna be creating a book with collage in it, it's gonna be a pamphlet stitch book. This is also a pamphlet stitch book. I don't actually go crazy um, with my stitching if I'm creating a fairly collage heavy book. Good question. Um, what other questions are there? Um, la, la, la. Are there any others that I have missed? Uh, oh, Mod Podge. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you put that on again, please, Amber? She's so good. Do I use Mod Podge? Um, I don't use Mod Podge. I am going to be today, I'm going to be using um, Matte Medium by I Like Utrecht. I also like Golden. I also like Liquitex. So I use a Matte Medium. Um, the reason I, I don't particularly care for Mod Podge is um, because it um, makes the pages sticky. Um, but if you, if you don't mind that, or you just want to put a piece of parchment paper in between your pages, that's fine. Or just leave it for ages to dry, just find it a bit sticky. All right, what other, are there other questions, Amber, that you want to pop on the screen for me? Thank you, oh, she's so good. When you have a magazine you'll use for collage, do you cut it up into elements initially, or do you wait until you're creating? Both. So I have a stack of magazines, which I just keep in case I really just want to flip through something. But often what I will do, Jean, is um, I will sit in front of TV and go through magazines. So let me just, so for example, let me, let me show you, let me show you this. This is a paper bag I have and I sit and go through magazines and pick out words. So um, I have hundreds and hundreds of words in here and I don't know what I'm going to use those words for, but I just have stacks of them. And they say really ra random things, like building a better mouse trap. I don't really know why I cut that out. It just sounded kind of interesting to me. That looked interesting to me. New edition. I don't know why. Let's see. Um, this was from, I don't even know. Living in once wild spaces means learning to live. Will I use that? Maybe not. But I just sit and I go through magazines and... Um, cut out words. I also cut out textures too. If I'm just sitting watching TV and I've got like a country living, I'll just rip out pages if I see an interesting bit of texture from an ad. Um, so some I leave just to one side, which I'll go through, but then other times um, I'll sort of go through them and, and pull out things that speak to me. And um, it's it's a really good exercise if you um, are kind of stuck and don't, don't know what to do or don't, don't you know, are feeling kind of creatively challenged. Oh, let me show you this. Oh, sorry. Boing. <laughs> so um, if you're in the Handmade Book Club, you're going to get a new book Saturday. This is a new book. I'm not, sh I'm not sharing. But um, this is a quote I pulled out years ago. And it suddenly, um, it's, it says, the season for bravery. Like, isn't that the coolest quote? And I didn't know what I was going to use it for. Or words, not really a quote, it's just some words. Um, but it, I was looking through my words and suddenly that was the perfect few words to go with the book that I just made so and I tucked it in there and put it with 52 which is how old I am so I thought yep those two go together so um I hope that helps <laughs> if 
Does that answer your question, Jean? I'm not quite sure. Um, and are there any other questions? Oh, thank you. This is very, have you done, this is a very nice book. Have you done the design of the inside pages after you finished making the book or you pulled pages together and made this book? Uh, a bit of both. So I will, good question, Chrissy. I think what you're talking about probably, oh, sorry. I, I wonder if you're talking about this book right here. What, what I'll generally do is I'll create the sort of guts of the book. So I'll do the, I'll create the base of a book and pamphlet stitch it, and then I'll add to it and add to it and add to it and add to it until it's done. So I do a little bit of both. I sort of pre-prepare some of the pages, sew it together, and then add some more. I hope that, if, I hope that answers the question. Um, have you pulled the pages together and made this book? Yeah, so it's a little bit of both. I do a little bit up front and then a little bit afterwards. What other questions are there? Are there any more, Amber? No, good. Thank you. All right. Let me see. Building a better journal. <laughs> Building a better mouse trap. Yeah, I know it's weird, but you know, but maybe I'll cut off mouse trap and say building a better, and then I'll have other words in there. I don't know. I don't know what goes on inside my head. Who knows? Should see the floor. I'm just chucking stuff on the floor. All right, let's chuck this on the floor. Let's let's make a start and make this journal, folks. Um, let me. Oh, oh, no, that's not what I want. Hold on. That's what I want. Okay. So as, oop, falling off the ball. Curating. Remember I said we're going to curate. I'm going to create a journal with these little collages in them. And my inspiration was actually from a club member. So Nancy Elliott sent me these gorgeous leaves, skeleton leaves that have been um, created by, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's the beetle called? Oh, I can't remember. Um, that really pretty beetle. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, I can't remember. She, oh, she, she gave me the name. I'm sorry. Anyway, it's created by Beetle and they create these gorgeous leaves. And these colors, I don't know if you can see them, these colors right here just really inspired me. This kind of ochre color and then this brown. And she sent me a whole bag. How kind of her was that? So I will probably put one of those leaves on the cover with the title. Um, but this is really what... I mean, look at this. Oh, oh, I'm going to ruin them. I'm going to rip them. They are just yum. Yum, yum, yum. So that's, that's what inspired me, although I won't be using one until I create the cover. And so I chose some papers which um, reminded me of those colors. And this, this is all I've got. I've just got this tiny pile of papers. I've got some black, which is going to be my base. I have some parchment paper from the kitchen. I have this little piece of handmade paper, probably from Thailand or somewhere. And this is another piece of handmade paper. So there's that yellow. I've got some text. And the only reason I've got the text is um, for a very tight pattern. So we're not using the text for meaning. It's just this is a very, I, I look at this as a pattern. I've got another piece of paper, which um, is from Cat Kirby, which with a, a large pattern on it. So small pattern, large pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a sixth, which is some these. This is deli paper that I jelly printed on, and it was a disaster. But I mean, <laughs> why would you throw it away? And um, I was just experimenting with some stencils, and and the, it didn't work out how I wanted. But these are the colors that I like. So this was one big sheet of paper, which I, I cut down. So we, we just have like half a dozen pieces of paper, types of paper here. That's it. That's all I'm allowing myself. Um, I wanted a little more texture. So this is opaque and has a lovely crinkly feel. This also is translucent. Um, this has some nice texture. So does this, but I wanted a little more texture. So I have two pieces of 
uh, muslin, which I think it might have been eco dyed. I don't know. It was just in my stash. It's just cotton. That's it. That's all I'm going to use. I may use a little bit of washi tape. I have some on my table. I'm not sure if I use them. You can't see them very well. These are from DD Catron's line. And you can just see that the colors go quite nicely. I may or may not use these. I don't know. And that's all I'm going to use to create some mini collages in my book. Um, I'm going to be showcasing a poem by Wendell Berry. This is the poem is called The Peace of Wild Things. I'm going to pop it on the screen for you. This is the name of the poem I'm going to be um, putting inside my book. And I have already printed it out. So I printed it out on a 10 font, yeah, 10 point font, and I've cut it up into strips. I'm going to put the um, title on the cover, cut it up into strips. And oh, let me just tell you, I numbered my strips. So that I didn't spend 10 days trying to reorganize them. And I cut them into strips, and that helped me determine how many pages I wanted. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this the poem is in six strips, and I made this little pamphlet stitch book. Let's get rid of that. And literally has two pages. You see, two pages. They started out at um, nine by 12. I folded them in half. So I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six collages and six little pieces of the poem. So I did plan that out ahead of time. I'm not just winging it, I promise. Um, and I'm gonna create little kind of three inch collages. So I've already done some ahead of time because obviously I'm not gonna do the whole thing live because um, that would be excessively boring, but I will do a couple live. This, here are the ones that I did ahead of time. Let me just put them on a white piece of paper. So do you remember from the other book, I did like this, the same composition to give myself limits. I've got limits with my papers. I've only got six papers, limited color palette. And I've also got a limited composition and I'm doing this cross-shaped composition. So here's one. I should trim that up, shouldn't I? Trim up the sewing there. And these are just using the papers that I just showed you. Apparently trimming up threads would be a really good idea ahead of time. So I've done four of the, four of the six for you. I don't feel like that one's finished yet. So let's let me show you how they came together. Let me, are there any questions, Amber, that I need to answer? Oh, um, the sh two sheets. Yes. Oh, actually, it was nine by, they started out at nine by 12, and now they're folded in half. So they're nine inches tall by six inches across. And this is just the, um, this is white handmade paper. That's okay. No, it's fine. It, it started out at nine by 12 and now it's folded to be six by nine. Okay. Let's collage friends. Let's collage. And how did I come up with a three inch square base? I, I knew I wanted a book this size and then I knew I wanted a lot of white space. So I just eyeballed and I thought that looks good. Three inch square. So I'm going to tear this down. I'm not going to cut. I'm just going to Cut this down with, I mean, tear this down with the ruler to three inches. Here's my little base piece. Let's put it on some white paper so you can see it. Some scrap paper to, um, to collage on. There we go. Here's my base. Now let's look through my papers. Um, I've also kept my little scraps here because <laughs> well, you wouldn't throw them away. Of course not. So I'm going to start out with a long piece to create. Remember, we're working with this kind of composition, this cross-shaped composition. So I'm going to use a large piece at the back. Just going to tear down a piece. I want that 
straighter across the top. Just save this little piece and put it in my, my bucket. So I want that a little tidier. Let's get rid of that white piece at the bottom. We can throw that away. So I'm going to start out with my cross design like that. Or I could do it like that. Hmm, which do I like? Let's do it like that. So let's grab our, remember using the matte medium. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, really. This is how we live around here. Really, people, this is real life. Disgusting, I know. And this is real life. This is my real paintbrush. Yeah. Let's not pretend. Okay, I'm going to glue. Did I say behind or on the front? I think on the front. Get a thin layer. This is a one inch, uh, one inch. I think it's a one inch brush. Let's pop this on top. Uh, I'm going to use a gift card just to smooth it out. There we are. Now let's start, let's go through our little pile of things and start layering up. So remember the limit is the composition. We're using the same type of composition. This is where the table's going to get very messy. Right? I don't want straight edges, so I'm going to tear my edges and save the little scraps. Now I've made that a bit too small though, so maybe I'll add a bigger piece of text at the back. So also the thing with limits is it gives you a little bit of a form. Oh, no, I don't like that. See, that doesn't look good. Not good, not good. Don't like that. Ooh, like that a lot. The thing with limits, it, it kind of not it doesn't give you a formula to work with. Oh, I like that a lot. It's not that you want a formula, because like creating things shouldn't be a formula, but um just no, it stops me getting overwhelmed, I guess. That I like a lot. Okay, let's. Let's play around now. Maybe we'll put that on there. Now, where's my parchment paper? Maybe I want a little piece of parchment paper. Do I have any parchment paper? Nope. Let's cut a little parchment paper. Remember we're doing this cross design. Oh, I like that. It's kind of layered. Or I could do a long, thin one, can I? Let's see. Can do that. Oh, I like that maybe, but it's the same width. I think I'll make that a bit smaller. So it's just it's just tearing and experimenting and layering and seeing what looks good. But my choices are few. I really don't have many. Oh, the yellow. I don't have many choice. Oh, yes, now we're talking. I don't have that many choices to work with, so I'm not feeling overwhelmed. Let's layer that on there. Maybe we'll layer this on there. I like that. Maybe I need some text now. Maybe we just need a teeny tiny piece of text from my pile. Remember, we're doing this kind of cross pattern. And do I, mm, I don't want that. Maybe we'll put that on there. Nope, don't like that. Maybe add a little bit of fabric to cover up that text. Maybe we'll put the text there. Maybe I like that. And then on top of here, we're going to have the poem. So mm, I'm not going to see that yellow, am I? So maybe we make the yellow a bit wider. But you, you get the idea. Let's just, I'm going to start layering this up. Oh, I think that stayed on there already. You just play and experiment. I will look up in a minute from my table and see if there's any um, questions. So there's a mess here, but not a lot of choice. I feel like this yellow needs to be wider. Perhaps I'll put it up here. I can choose which side do I like. I think I like that side. Let's put that up higher. Just not loving this, I gotta tell you, not loving it, not loving it. Not 
not loving that either. It's like we're auditioning, right? We're auditioning these different pieces. Okay, that I like. That I like. That I like. Okay, then where's my little credit card gone? Here it is. Now I would let this dry and um, then I've put stitching around the outside. I'm gonna let that dry and I shall do, um, I'm not gonna do another one live, but um, I, do need a, I do need another one. So let, let me just start this up. Let me see if there's any questions. Are there any questions? Uh, here it is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Why is a small ruler? Oh, I don't know. It's a six inch ruler. It says Westcott on it. W-E-S-T-C-O-T-T. -T. And it's um, six inches and 15 centimeters long. So I would just do a little Google search, see if you can find it. Okay. All right, let me just let me just get another base ready and then um, we'll start putting our little book together. It's very loud. So then I would do this, exactly the same thing. That is not three inches square. <laughs> oh, now I've got a little piece for our little um, dishes. So I would just do the same again. Maybe I would allow, put one of, put this on the back. That's kind of cool. So it needs to be narrower because I remember I'm doing the same composition, exactly the same composition. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I wanted it longer. I don't know. Need a larger piece in the middle now. Maybe we want a big piece, this one. Now, at least I've started now and I'm not going to be able to stop. Let me just give you an idea of what I might do. I won't necessarily glue it down. I don't have much choice, remember. Maybe I want some washi. No, I don't. Mm, do I like that? Maybe. Mm, maybe not. Maybe we like this one. Ooh, I like the little bit of gold in that. That's kind of interesting. Although I would like that a bit narrower. So you you get the idea, folks. You're just, I have a very limited amount of supplies right here and I'm just going back and forth. See, that doesn't look good. There's no contrast. We want, we want contrast. Maybe we want black. Oh yes, that's what I want. I want another piece of black there. And then maybe some texture with a piece of my, a uh, piece of the handmade paper that might look, mm, yeah. I think maybe the um, fabric would look good here. That might look, ooh, that might look kind of interesting. So I would just keep going and going and going and going until I got the, the um, composition I liked. But remember using, using the limits that we have. And now let's, let's go back to the book and start popping some things in. This is a pamphlet stitch book, three holes. I just sewed it right in the middle. Doesn't need to be structurally, you know, super um, sturdy because it's just an artist book. And I just packed the outside. I'm gonna put a leaf on the front with the title, but I'm gonna start the inside. I'm gonna, oh, that one's wet. We don't want that one. I'm gonna start with so I'm going to start with this first one. I'm going to find line one. Here's line one and see how that looks with line one. Now I feel like um, I want to trim this up. I think I'd like to split these in half. I don't like them as one long piece. I like them like that. So I think I'll glue that down. So um, I am going to I'm going to share the poem with you while I, um, I'm going to share my screen with you while I just glue this first page down. Hold on, Chrome tab. Here we go. Here is the poem. Hopefully you can see that. It 
It's a really nice poem by Wendell um, Berry. My mind went blank then. And the reason that um, it, it's one of my favorites, but the reason it came to me is that um, I was out walking by the river yesterday and I um, saw a heron and that reminded me of that poem. And I thought I want to put that into a book. So um, we will share a link to that. We will um, we'll share a link to that poem. Hold on, sorry, let me. There we go. I'm going to add my, my poetry to my little collages, then add my collages to the page. Now, if, um, if I feel like this is not strong enough, I would use, to hold it down to the page, I'd use double stick tape. But I feel like this is okay. I think the um, I think the matte medium will work. Let's add this first one right there. Press it down. I'm gonna use my gift card. If I've missed any, I can just go in there. We are. Not sure if this is going to be strong enough to hold down this collage. We'll have to see. Here we are. Let me just do the second one. So where's where are lines number two? There's lines five. There's line six. See, I've done this before, and honestly, yeah, I just lose them all the time. So let's cut these out. Here's my second page. I'm going to see what works well with it, what little collage is going to work well. I did use a little bit of washi tape there. I feel like that needs some yellow, to be honest. But that needs the yellow. Like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down and then um, I'll finish the rest on my own time and share photos with you of the finished book once it's all come together. Just, I, just, I just felt like it needed a little bit of yellow. So here's the next line of the poem. If there are any questions, I will answer them right now. I know Amber will pop them on the screen for me in a second. There we go. Then I'll glue that on here. So limited paper, limited composition, Question from Christina, what are your favorite paperweights for the basic journal pages? Um, I like um, 90 pound pages or more. This is probably a heavier, this is probably, um, this is probably closer to 140 pound watercolor paper, um, but like a 90 pound watercolor paper I really like or a printmaking paper or um, the 210 GSM Cardi paper is another one I really like. It, it really depends. If I know I'm going to be putting a lot of heavy collage on there, I'll go with a heavier paper. If I just think there's going to be a couple layers, I'll go with the, um, the lighter weight paper. So between 90 and 140 pounds is where I go. I'm going to just center that. I really feel like this might need double stick tape. Well, that's okay. It's not sure the matte medium is going to be strong enough for all that collage. That's okay. I can change your mind. So I will just keep going throughout the book. 
layering up my mini collages with the lines of the poem and then my book will be finished. And then um, what the heck am I gonna do with all this stuff on my table? Well, let me tell you. What I do is um, I grab my tags box, because you know, and I some, we like things organized, and I grabbed some tags. So right here I grabbed this, um, I don't know what this is, some old, some vintage card, I think it's a, might be from a, um, you know, a, well, you clock in and out, I forget what they're called. Um, I took that card and I as added all my bits and pieces that were left over. So I just grabbed, oops, it goes this way around, I think, maybe it doesn't. I just grabbed uh, some larger pieces, laid them down, and then just took all these little odds and ends and piled them up. In fact, in fact let's just add another one, shall we? Right here, I feel like it needs something in the corner. Ooh, that's interesting, that yellow, but too late. So I just added all my little bits and pieces to a tag. I don't know what I'm gonna use the tag for, but I'll tell you what I could do is um, give this tag to a friend, for example. Oh. <laughs> and then I could go through my little word collection, right? And I could find some interesting words. Just some words that just speak to me right then and there. The world consumes. No, thank you. I don't want to. Breadth of expertise. That's kind of interesting. Right, it kind of goes with the colors. Some quotes here. A roomy quote. No, you get the idea, though. Just go through my pile of soap box. I don't know what I'm going to use that for. <laughs> I'll just go through rage. Oh, no, thank you. I don't want to put that on there right now. A transition to success. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So you just had a little glimpse into how my mind works. Let me just come across. Um, are there any other questions? Let's see. Are there any groups or clubs for people who like making altered books? Asked Janet. Um, I don't know of any, to be honest. I know the best club around, and that's the Handmade Book Club. <laughs> but, well, we make the books, and then we fill the books. Uh, but no, I don't know, I'm afraid. But there must be. There must be Facebook groups. There must be um, different um, online spaces and in person, I'm sure. I just, I just don't know of any, I'm afraid. But good question. Um, any other questions that have come up? Or should I let you go um, raid your stash of collage materials and go make stuff? No, it doesn't look like it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today and for, um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess here now. <laughs> i got to go clean up. Thank you for um, collaging with me in my journals. Next week, uh, where do we see the finished product? Oh, that's a good question. I'll, I'll be posting it on... Um, Facebook, I'll post it on Instagram, and I'll also pop it in next week's newsletter as well, Kathleen, so that you can see it. Um, good question, though. Good question. Um, next week, I will be creating a, um, a journal, a leather journal, and um, I'm not going to tell you why I'm creating a leather journal next week, but I am. So come back next Thursday at noon Eastern time. And I will be sewing a very simple leather journal uh, that you could you could collage in or do whatever you would like or make an early Christmas present. So um, watch this space. Um, come back next Thursday and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for being here today. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful week.